Hi, I'm Mr. Hagland Pagel, and the purpose for this video is to help improve your argumentative writing. A lot of people claim that they're better writers if they just sit down and try to write it all out at once, uh, but I've read enough disorganized papers, and if I'm going to be honest, I've written enough disorganized papers to know that it's actually better if you plan out what you're going to write a little bit ahead of time. So, hopefully some of these tricks will help you do better when you have to write any sort of argumentative thing, whether it's a paper uh, or you're trying to organize your thoughts to convince somebody you know to agree with you, these methods will help you. The first thing we're going to look at is how to collect quotes. Um, most of you are going to have to read something. You're going to need to collect quotes, and if you do that in an intentional way, it's going to make it a lot easier for you when you sit down to organize your paper. We're going to look at some old-fashioned ways to do that with pencils and paper and uh, making outlines and figuring out how best to organize your paper. And then we'll also explore some electronic ways. What's nice about electronics is they often save you uh, little bits of time here and there that add up to hours when you're all done. Before we get underway, uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about what it is a good argument paper actually looks like. The most obvious thing is it needs a thesis, which as you know is a sentence that explains what it is you're trying to prove. Uh, a good thesis should be debatable, that is it's not an obvious truth or an obvious uh, untruth, but something that uh, reasonable people might argue about. Uh, it should be fairly narrowly defined, so you're not talking about something too broad, uh, and it should be something defendable. It shouldn't just be an opinion, uh, it should at least be something that you can uh, pull information from texts or from other people around the world uh, to back up what it is you're trying to argue. You also need examples from a text that proves your thesis. So in pretty much any sort of writing, you are looking at other people's writing, you're finding a snippet from that writing that really shows what it is you're trying to say, and then you need to explain in very clear terms how that writing uh, supports your thesis. So that's the purpose of this video. Uh, in order to do a coherent explanation, I needed a pretend assignment. So the one that I will be imagining I'm doing as I walk you through my examples is explain how a fictional character exemplifies a certain archetype. I understand some of you might actually be doing a similar assignment, but even if you were doing something not for English, if it was in social studies or science, uh, you'd probably be given some sort of question to answer, uh, and then either you would get to choose what materials you did your uh, research in, or it might be assigned to you. I chose to use The Hobbit uh, because a lot of students are familiar with it, and more importantly, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, what I'm going to try to teach you here is some, first of all, basic strategies for collecting quotes while you're reading. So we're going to look at highlighting, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll look at ways to actually gather your quotes so they're not just floating around in a book somewhere, or several books. And we'll also talk about using a camera to capture those quotes that maybe you can't highlight in a book. Then we're going to look at strategies for organization, because you can collect a whole bunch of quotes, but if you don't know how to put them together, your paper isn't going to be very effective. So we'll look at graphic organizers. There's a lot of different things you can do, either on paper or digitally. Uh, we'll look at note cards, and then we'll look at outlines as well. Let's get started. One of the most basic ways to collect quotes is if you have the luxury to own the book yourself, so you can mark it up and wreck it all you want, you can highlight it. Maybe as I'm reading, I read, then, if Bilbo was very nimble, he could slip out just behind him, though it was a dangerous thing to do. That might seem like an example of some sort of heroism, so I just take my highlighter and highlight it. Nothing too amaz amazing there, uh, but it's nice to be able to do. Now, if you're smart, when you do that, you'll also mark the page. That way, as you go to write your paper, you don't have to just randomly thumb through your book to find where you've highlighted. You can put a little mark. I like to use a post-it because they stick in there well. And then I know where I can go back to find those quotes. But there's another step you can do that's even more effective. And if you're doing it just the old-fashioned way, uh, what I would suggest is have a piece of notebook paper. Uh, as you can see, 
I know this is going to be about the book The Hobbit, and it's something about a hero. I don't have a good thesis yet. Uh, and as I've gone, I've just been jotting down the page number and something to remind me what it's about. So what I would do with that one that I just highlighted is it's page 173. I'd write down 173. And to remind me, it happened in the elf caves. That way, when I am going back and trying to find good examples to support whatever my thesis is, which I'm not quite sure what it is yet, I'll know, aha, on 173, I remember it talks about Bilbo hiding out in the elf caves for a long time. An option that's even better than keeping a notebook on hand is to be taking your notes electronically. This is especially handy if you can't highlight in the thing that you're reading. It takes a little bit more time, but in the end, it'll actually save you time during your organization and writing. It's often easier to keep organized uh, with the added bonus that if you type out the quotes as you collect them, then when you go to write whatever it is you're going to write, you have them already typed up so you can just copy and paste them where you'd want them. As with the notebook example that you just saw, it's good to have a title at the top, and I've also included the question I'm going to work with, which you can see right here, and I've started to work on a thesis. I'm going to write about the character Bilbo and something about bravery. So I've already got some of my quotes down. As you can see, there's a lot of quotes on the right side of the page that I'm interested in including but I don't want to write it all out. It gets a little too long and a little drawn out. So what I've done over here on the left is I've summarized. Bilbo is lost in the goblin tunnels and tries to cheer himself up by smoking his pipe when he realizes he has no matches. The part that I do want to get a quote from on the right is a little bit chopped up, so I'll have to make sure to take notes uh, the proper way. So I'm starting. And then I skip some of the writing that I don't think will help my argument later and continue to write down somehow he was comforted. That may be a little bit more than I want, but it's better to have too much text and then you can trim down when you go to write your paper. If you have too little, you might find yourself not having enough to write about later on. When I do go to write my paper, I could just copy and paste this entire section in. Of course, I would think about why I was doing that, and we'll talk more about that shortly. Here's another example of using uh, Microsoft Word to collect your notes, uh, and I typed them out in here. Uh, and you can also see that I used highlighting. Uh, as I read, I started to realize what the more important quotes were, so I made sure to highlight them so that when I went to type up the paper I needed to do attached with this, uh, I could easily find the best quotes. You can also use OneNote. Uh, here you can see I've got the same quotes that we were just typing in Word, uh, but the benefit of OneNote, or you could also do this uh, perhaps with a Google Doc, uh, some people I've seen use PowerPoint to take their notes and organize in this way. The benefit over Word is you can see here I've also included um, some links to videos, uh, some links to reviews on The Hobbit. It's a handy place to put it all in one place. And you can see as I'm working, my thesis is developing. Now it's not just Bilbo and bravery. I've started to recognize, based on all of these quotes, that in each situation, Bilbo had to make a decision to be brave. As I'm doing my research, my thesis is developing. If you're working with a text that you can't highlight directly in, and you don't want to take the time to type out individual quotes, another option is to use a camera, and many people now have decent cameras on their cell phones, always in their pocket. Find the section you want to take a uh, picture of. We're going to go with this paragraph right here. Just take your phone. Make sure you've got the right section in there and that it's legible. 
And then it's often a good idea if you didn't get the page number in the picture to then zoom out and also get that. And that way when you're doing your work cited, you'll be easily able to tell where you got that quote from. To recap what we've learned so far, we've focused on capturing quotes. First by highlighting, we talked about collecting quotes, whether that was in a notebook, in Microsoft Word, or some other program. And we also looked at taking pictures of the quotes with the camera.